guys, Nick Crispino here, and today I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to create a dancing robot using 3D tracking in After Effects. For this tutorial, we're going to be using three things, After Effects, Premiere, and the Element 3D plugin for After Effects. So we're going to start off here in Adobe Premiere. I'm going to be using this random clip that I took, and I'm also going to be linking this clip in the description below if you want to go ahead and download it so you can follow along, but I do recommend that you use your own footage. So first thing we're going to do is make sure the clip is selected, right click, and replace with After Effects Composition. I'm going to go ahead and save this composition in this folder that I created on my desktop, and I don't know, something really weird is happening with the letters down here, I don't know what that's about. But anyways, so now that our clip is in After Effects, we're going to go over here to the sidebar to Tracker and hit Track Camera. If you don't see Tracker here, go up to Window, and in the drop down menu, you should see Tracker right there. Now we're just going to let After Effects do its thing and analyze our footage. Alright cool, so once it's done you're going to see all these points pop up on the screen. Go back to the first frame of your clip and select, holding down shift, click and select four points that line up against the ground. Once you find something that you're happy with, right click and go and hit create solid and camera. Once your solid appears, select the solid layer, go down to transform and just play with it until it is it looks like it is aligned to the ground. All right, it looks like it's sticking pretty well. So now we're going to create a new solid. This is going to be our element 3D layer, so I'm just going to call it E3D. Now go up here to effects, go down to video copilot and hit element. Okay, so before we go any further, we're gonna go to Mixamo.com to get our 3D model. Mixamo is this great website. It's got loads of pre-made 3D models and animations, and it's totally free with your Adobe subscription. So we're gonna go ahead and use this model, and we're gonna hit download, and the only thing that we're gonna change is frames per second. Make sure it matches your sequence. Um, my premiere sequence is 60 frames per second, so I'm just gonna make it 60 and hit download. Now once that's downloaded, I'm just gonna drag it into my robot dance tutorial folder. Now it's time to open up Blender. I know I didn't mention it in the beginning of the video and I know what you're thinking, oh my god, I hardly know how to use After Effects, let alone Blender. We're only gonna be using it as a conversion tool. You see, the file we downloaded was an FBX file and Element 3D can't work with those. It can only, to my knowledge, it can only work with OBJ files. So we're gonna use Blender to convert it from an FBX file to an OBJ file. So if you don't have Blender, go ahead and download it now. It's a free software, so you don't gotta worry about paying for anything. And while you download it, I'm gonna wait right here. Alright, so once you download Blender, go ahead and open it up and you should be introduced to a screen that looks like this. Go ahead and press A, right click, and delete. This will give us a fresh plane to work with. Now hit File, Import, FBX. Find your FBX file and import. Now that it's imported, all we simply gotta do is export. But before you do that, you're gonna wanna just create a designated folder to export it to. I'm gonna go ahead and call this Robo Convert. I cannot stress enough how important it is to export to a separate designated folder, and you'll see why in a minute. Go up here to File, Export, Wavefront.obj. Find the folder you want to export it to, and go over here and make sure Animation is checked off. Now export. Now depending upon your computer, this process may take a little while. I'm not on the craziest setup, so for me this usually takes anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. So I'm going to let Blender do its thing, and I'm going to go get a snack. That's a good apple. Okay, so now that Blender is done doing its thing, you're gonna go into your Robo Convert folder, and you now see why we uh, render to a designated folder. Blender is going to export every single keyframe of the animation. If you go down here, it is a total of 250 keyframes, and trust me, it is not fun exporting all of that to your desktop by accident. I've made that mistake before. You don't, I... I so anyway, we're going to go back into After Effects, select your Element 3D layer, and hit Scene Setup. This is going to bring you into Element 3D. Go up here to File, Import, 3D Sequence. Go into your converted folder, and select the very first keyframe of the animation, and hit Import 3D Object. Make sure Force Alignment is on the bottom and hit OK. Now where the hell is our robot? Don't worry, all you need to do is go over here and click Normalize Size 
and there it is. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is go over here to create and create a plane. This is the plane we're gonna use to form our shadows. Go down here to scale. I'm just gonna make it huge, make it 1000. That's perfect. Go over here to presets, uh, materials, pro shaders, oops, I'm sorry, not pro shaders, physical. If you don't see pro shaders, don't worry about it. That's something that's like an extra thing you can buy off uh, video copilot. So don't worry if you don't have those, you don't really need them for this tutorial. So hit physical and scroll down until you see this right here, matte shadow. Drag and drop it onto your plane. Go to the Y axis and just drag it up ever so slightly until the grid disappears. Hit OK. And now our robot is in our scene, but we're not done yet. Go to group one, create a group null and hit create. Now what we're going to want to do is go to our track solid open up our transform settings, do the same for our group null. And what you're going to want to do is copy the position of the track solid onto the position of the group null and do the same for the orientation. And any changes that you made to the X, Y, and Z rotation on your track solid, uh, copy and paste it to the group null as needed. Now, as you can see, our robot is on a 90 degree angle. Go back to your element 3D uh, layer and go to particle look, I believe. Yes, particle look and particle rotation. Go to the X rotation particle and make it 90 degrees. Now, as you can see, our robot is upright, but he's a little big. So I'm going to go over here to particle size and I'm going to make it, let's see what 7 looks like. Uh, still a little too big, maybe 4.5. Uh, how about 4? You know what, I'm happy. Actually, you know what? No, I'm happy with 4.5. Yeah, he looks uh, pretty lifelike there. Now let's hide our track solid and see if it looks like he's standing on the plane. Doesn't really look that aligned, so what I'm going to do is go to the group null and just mess with it until it looks like he is actually standing on the ground. Negative 50 is good, so just remember that any changes you make to the group null, you have to make to the actual track solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that negative 50 as well, just so everything is the same. And I'm also going to mess with the size again. I'm just gonna make it four. So now we're gonna create some shadows. Go up here to help, go to new light, and make sure the light type is spot. Drag it up above the group null so it is the top layer. Now what I like to do is copy the position of the group null to the position of the spotlight as well as the point of interest of, to the spotlight. Now you may notice only the robot got darker. That is because we did not um, enable shadows. So go back to your element 3D layer, scroll down to render settings, find shadows, and hit enable. Now go back down to your light options and it's going to be different for every single scene. So mess with the light until you get shadows that you're happy with. So I'm just gonna play with the positioning a little bit until I find something that I'm happy with. As you can see, the shadows are appearing and our robot is looking a little bit more lifelike. I don't know exactly what time of day this clip was taken, so I'm not entirely sure where the sun was at this point in time. So I'm just gonna make the shadows, uh, I'm gonna put them right there, that looks good. A pro tip if you're gonna do something like this, try to shoot a clip where there are actual real world shadows, that way you have a reference, it just makes it easier. Now since this was a cloudy day, our shadows don't really look very accurate to the environment and neither does the light shining on a robot. So I'm gonna go down here to light options and just bring the shadow darkness down a little bit. And as you can see, the light on our robot is getting a little less defined. 48% uh, is fine. I'm just gonna bring the diffusion up a little bit. That'll give our shadow a little more blur and a little more believability. Um, let's see how that looks. Yeah, 124 is good. I'm also just gonna make the cone angle a little bit bigger. I want this light to cover as much space as possible. Now go back to your element 3D layer, go back down to render settings and find ambient occlusion and select it. With it off and with it on, gives the robot a little bit more shadow definition. I'm gonna see what it looks like with six. 
Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go five instead. So I'm gonna let this render and we're gonna play it back and see how it looks. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. And as you can see, it does reset. That's because the animation itself is only 250 frames, while our clip is, I think it's about 500 frames, 500, 400 something frames. You can go mess with the settings in Mixamo to create a perfect loop, but for the sake of time, I didn't do that. All right, so everything looks like it came out pretty solid. The tracking looks nice and smooth. Now let's go back into Element 3D scene setup and give our robots some detail. The great thing about Element 3D, it comes with this great starter pack of all these colors and materials. With this specific model, you can only color in two sections. The torso, the head, the arms are all represented by this light red coloring and its elbows, joints, and all that stuff are indicated by a darker red. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag paint red onto the joints, and as you can see, the coloring is less dull, it's more glossy, and let's see what gold looks like. And that looks pretty cool, but what I'm gonna do is go down to the uh, model layer, select paint red, go down, down here to basic settings and diffuse color, you can change it to whatever you want. You can change it from red to purple, blue. Now you can spend forever customizing your robot to your liking, but for now, I'm just going to make the joints black and everything else white. And I'm getting some mad Stormtrooper vibes. I don't know about you, but I'm liking that. And to make your robot even more lifelike, go down here to environment. I'm gonna select default. And as you can see, the reflection kind of changes. Whatever you're, wherever you shot your clip, just try to find whatever best, best suits uh, the environment. So for here, if you're shooting indoors, you, there's a lobby. If you're shooting like in a downtown metro area, there's a town, you can see everything's reflecting. But if you want it to be a little more subtle, they also have these blurred options. So to make it not as obvious. I'm just gonna go ahead with the default and let's see how that looks. Now that is really nice. Now since the robot in this clip is far away, you can't really tell what the reflection is unless you zoom in, but I like to do it anyway. Now I like to use the dynamic link between Premiere and After Effects because I like to make all my final edits, color grading, resizing for Instagram, etc. in Premiere. You don't have to do that if you're just fine with just importing into After Effects, making the clip and exporting, you can do that too. But if you're like me, you're probably making this for Instagram. So I'm gonna go back into Premiere, do color grading, reshaping and exporting. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna throw on a quick LUT for the colors. Go in here, maybe turn the intensity down a little bit. That looks pretty good. Mess with the basic color correction doesn't have to be perfect. I do recommend, however, going into your effects and adding some noise. Personally, I think noise helps make everything blend together, makes the robot actually look like it's in the clip itself. There we go, that looks pretty good, nice and subtle. Now we're going to shape this for Instagram. We're gonna to go to File, New Sequence, go over here to Settings, and I'm gonna make this the portrait uh, dimension size for Instagram, so I'm gonna make it 1080, by 1350. Go back to your first sequence and drag it into the portrait sequence. Keep existing settings, go into effects, and resize as necessary. Go ahead and let that render so I can see how it looks. All right, and that looks pretty good, all things considered. And there you have it, that is how you create the dancing 3D robot using Element 3D, After Effects, and 3D tracking. If you do use this method to create something awesome, be sure to tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see the cool things that you guys make. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful, I'm sorry if it seemed like I wasn't articulating very well, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone making this, I'm usually on the other side of the camera. I'm not good in front of the camera, I stumble over my words, I stutter, but I digress. And uh, yeah, that's about it. End scene.